Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to another episode of Sri's daily global COVID-19 show. This is our daily conversation with people around the world about the COVID-19 crisis. We are here in New York City on day number 62 of the lockdown and show number 62. That tells you that we have been doing this every single day of the New York City lockdown. And our plan is to do this as long as there is a lockdown in New York City or until I get the COVID-19 virus, which I'm hoping not to. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for sharing this with your friends and family. Please tag them so they can join us. We're live on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, and on LinkedIn. So if you're on any of those platforms, please share. If you're on Twitter, retweet. We want everybody to come around and listen and uh, talk to us today and tell us where you're watching from. Please tell us how you're feeling, what you're thinking about. This is day two of a two-part series we're doing about children and mental health, children and the COVID-19 crisis. So yesterday, this is not today's show, but yesterday we talked to two folks from the Child Mind Institute, Arno Klein and Mimi Corcoran, the executive director Mimi and the senior research scientist Arno Klein, and we learned a lot about mental health aspects of this. Today, we are in for a treat because we are going to meet the family that's put together a very special book that everyone's going to enjoy. It's called Kelly Stays Home, kellystayshome.com, and you're gonna meet Lauren Block, MD, and Adam Block, PhD, and you're gonna meet a very special guest, maybe the most important person in that family. You're gonna meet her in just a minute, so we're gonna come back but please everyone share with your friends and family before we bring them on. We want you to tag them, tell them that anybody with kids would benefit from watching the show today. Even if they can't watch it live, they can watch it later. We're gonna even have a special reading by our special young friend of this, of this book. So you're gonna really enjoy it and it's going to be fun. So please, please, please tag and share with your friends. We wanna thank our sponsors who make this possible, including Nidhi Sinha, who is a friend of the show, and instead of publicizing something for herself, she's publicizing ProPublica and congratulating it on its latest Pulitzer Prize. That makes six in 12 years, journalism that holds the powerful accountable. Donate today, ProPublica.org, ProPublica.org. And also, if you like what you're seeing here, if you like the way we do this production, well, this is strictly amateur hour because this is me operating all the buttons. But when we do the professional way, you want to hire my team, our friends at DigiMentors, my company that I work with, awesome folks. And we do everything from converting your in-person events into virtual events, making your own talk show if you'd like to have one, training, consulting. You, we can be 10% of your production or 110% of your production. Please email me, sri at sri.net. You see the email address right there. We can help you tell your stories don't cancel your conference is my motto. At least talk to us before you do, or even before you postpone. Let's see if we can make help make you have a sustainable and uh, profitable conference or accessible. Think any of the adjectives that matter to you. Among the things we're doing, a conference for 50,000 teachers on May 30th. We just finished a project, a three-day conference for Princeton. We're doing a whole bunch of things, big and small, please be in touch, Sri at Sri.net. My name is Sri Srinivasan, and I'm the Marshall Loeb Visiting Professor of Digital Innovation at Stony Brook School of Journalism. And we're about to go to Long Island to meet three Long Islanders who are gonna be talking about the work that they're doing on this very special book called Kelly Stays Home and kellystayshome.com. So I think we're ready, and I'm going to bring them on right now. Ready, big reveal, one, two, three. And there they are, hello. Uh, I see that we have with us, um, we have with us uh, um, Adam Block, Adam, and we have Lauren Block. And who is this young person with us? What's your name? I'm Elise. Elise, and Elise Block, am I guessing correctly? Yeah. <laughs> yes. So she is, I, I presume, also past, uh, past her bedtime, but she's here to help connect with the world, aren't you, Elise? Mm -hmm. Yes, excellent. So I'm going to just tell you who's visiting with us right now. We have people from all over. Uh, we have Sonali watching. See, she says hello. Stefan is watching, and he says, 
Uh, greetings from Ramsey, New Jersey. I have several questions for these ever important guests. Thank you. Ashok is watching from India. Uh, Jennifer is watching right now from New Jersey. Uh, and Jonathan Borstein has watched us for 62 straight days uh, from the East Village. And Courtney is watching after missing from shows in Tucson, Arizona. Now, have you been to any of these places, Elise? <laughs> any yet. of these places sound familiar? How about New York City? Um, only New Jersey. New Jersey. Okay, we've got to fix that, Mom and Dad, when we can travel again. <laughs> got to get her to some exciting uh, spots beyond New Jersey, okay? We got to get that yeah. on the agenda. Uh, let me introduce you to our guests. Uh, in, in addition to Elise, her parents are here. Dr. Lauren Blo uh, Block is with uh, the Zucker School of, uh, of Medicine, and she's part of Northwell and Hofstra University. And uh, she and her husband, that's Adam, who's a health economist, have together put on and put together a very special new book that we're gonna show you in just a second. It's called Kelly Stays Home. And we're gonna use this as an opportunity while Elise is with us to talk about the book, but also to get into a little bit about the medical and health questions around children and COVID-19 and how they put this all together. So uh, we'll start with Dr. Block. Which one? We don't know. We <laughs> might have a junior honorary doctor in the, in the house. So uh, Dr. Lauren Block, we'll start with you. Tell us why you created this and how people can find it. They can see the URL right there and let's get going. Okay, great. And thanks so much for having us on, Tree. And I think it's amazing you've been doing this for 62 days straight. And I hope you stay healthy and continue to do this until, until we're done with the lockdown here in New York and beyond. Um, so Adam and I are parents to Elise. Um, as well as two other very curious kids. And just like our kids had lots of questions about the pandemic and about why they were no longer going to school and why they were no longer seeing their friends and our extended family, um, we thought other kids would have similar questions as well. Um, and so our goal with this book is to share some of the science behind the pandemic in a way that kids and families can discuss together things like viral transmission, why social distancing works, why it's so important to wash your hands um, and clean surfaces and just how infectious this organism is, as well as some of the unique aspects to treatment and prevention through a vaccine and through goals like herd immunity so that we can keep everyone safe in the midst of this pandemic. And did you find that it was hard to come across information? That's why you did this yourselves? Yeah, so I think there's a lot of information, right? There's a barrage of information constantly on social media, um, on TV, in the news about the pandemic. Um, and there is so much coming to us that it's hard to find sort of evidence-based, science-based information in a way that's all in one um, location and in a way that makes concepts easy to understand for kids and easy for the families to discuss with kids in a way that everyone can understand and feel empowered to take care of each other, take care of their family and their communities and understand why so many changes have occurred in everyone's life. You know, life looks a lot different now than it did um, 63 days ago before the lockdown and before your daily show started. And I think it's important um, so that we all continue to do the right thing to understand exactly why um, we are taking the steps needed and why those of us who work in healthcare and work in other um, first line and, and um, frontline responder jobs need to take such precautions when we're at work as well as when we're home to help keep our families, our patients and everyone else in our community safe. So our goal was to enable some of the conversations between families and their kids about some of these topics through a free resource that's available to everyone on the web aimed at little kids age four to six. Elise has a little brother, Jordan, who just turned five and he could understand a little bit of it. Um, so we wanted to create some simple language um, with some beautiful illustrations. And then for slightly bigger kids, ages seven to 11, we got into some more detail 
about the basic epidemiology, viral transmission, um, disease pathogenesis, as well as some of the aspects of treatment and the search for a vaccine. Um, so that families, teachers, you know, everyone who's interacting with kids can discuss things in a way that empowers everybody to feel um, like they're doing the right thing. They know why we're taking the steps needed and um, that we can do our part to keep everyone safe. If you're feeling that you're getting covered by the book, you can duck under there at any moment so that you can also uh, get seen by uh, by uh, so that everybody can see you. And at least before we come to you, just going to ask your dad, another uh, doctor, Adam Block, he's a PhD health economist. Uh, how does how how does your work, uh, not as a medical doctor, but someone who is looking at the health effects and the economics of this? Why did you decide that this is important to do as well? So uh, I am a doctor, but uh, not really the kind that helps people. So yeah, I'm a health economist <laughs> and I study the United States healthcare system. And uh, what I think what we're seeing a lot of right now, and I'm a professor of public health. And what I think we're seeing a, uh, a lot of right now is the talk about, well, is it public health versus the economy? You know, and my perspective has always been, no, it's both of them together, which basically means that uh, if you open up things, I don't know necessarily that people are going to go back. Uh, initially, I don't know that it's necessarily safe to go back. We want to open up at a time that it is safe to go back, and that is the way to optimize the economy in the long run. Uh, but what I found was that there were a lot of concepts that were out there and a lot of information, and quite honestly, a lot of the health economic modeling is very, very similar to the epidemiological modeling. And what we found was that there wasn't a ton of straightforward information that we could use to explain to our kids. And so we really wanted something, a tool out there that we could explain to our kids. And we thought that other kids might have similar questions. So that's why we decided to just think about this in a really structured, organized way. Because while we study different fields, somewhat different fields, um, we're both educators, and uh, one of the keys to being a successful educator is to lay things out simply and in a structured way. And I think we were really successful in doing this because if you look at something, a concept, uh, I think it's on page 32, herd immunity. Herd immunity is a concept that I did not learn about until my second year of my doctorate. And now we have a book out there that we believe explains very clearly to someone that is Elise's age what herd immunity is. And it's incredibly important now to know what herd immunity is because it's something that nowadays is talked about in the news all the time. And so you now have a chance to do just that. So let's bring Elise into this and give her a chance to look at this and help us understand what's going on. So Elise, you're, you're looking at the book. Uh, you've had a chance to read it multiple times. So Elise is going to uh, maybe just read a couple of pages. Is that okay, Elise? Okay, so we're gonna pull up this and I can I can turn the pages here. So this is Kelly Stays Home Junior, The Science of Coronavirus, and you can find it, all of you can find it free on kellystayshome.com. Please tag your friends. And if they have children, the children can watch it later with the family. Or if you're watching on the east west coast of America, you can watch it right now and have your family join us as well. So Kelly, uh, sorry, Elise is going to read this about Kelly Stays Home. So here we go. This is to our budding scientists about this book is uh, her parents, Lauren and Adam Block, have written this. And so let's go here. Go ahead, uh, Elise, get us started. Kelly's excited. It's Friday. She puts on her red shirt for school spirit day and, dash and dashes out the door Where's the, where she expects the school bus to be waiting. No bus. Kelly says her mom, I just got a phone call. We're not going to, we are going to have spirit day at home because there is no school today. There's, Fine, there's no, reasons you. You, you're not going to school and daddy isn't going to work at the office today. There's a new illness called coronavirus. It is spreading to people all over the world. It is easy to catch from other people. Everyone is staying home because it is, because it is not safe to go to school 
or to the office. Mommy is going to the hospital tonight, like normal, to help take care of sick people. But you and Dad, you, Joey, will stay safe at home with Daddy. Great job, Lucy. Great job. Very good. Great job. Thank you. Uh, how did that feel, reading that to the whole world with people watching from so many countries? Was that fun, reading that? Yeah. You, you did a really good job. So, uh, yeah. Elise, tell us what it's like to be out of school. Are you happy that you're not going to school, or do you miss your friends? Well, I miss my friends, but sometimes I get to see them on, like, FaceTime. Okay. And what, is, what are some of the things you're going to remember? This is all going to pass, and we're going to move on. What are you going to remember about these two, three months that you were like this? What are some fun things you did with mommy and daddy, maybe, or your um, brother? Well, sometimes we go out, like, to the beach on a boardwalk, and then we scoot there, which is really fun. And um, I know how to ride a bike, so I ride a bike with my um, family around the block and sometimes go to my grandparents' house and ride a bike there. And how do you That's like spending great. all the time with your with your two brothers? Are they fun or are they annoying? I would say <laughs> both, but mostly annoying. <laughs> are, are they both? Is that possible that they're both at the same time? No, usually annoying, but sometimes fun. And what did you do to Jordan yesterday over here? Oh, he, technically he did it, and then he asked me to do. What so did you he, draw? He made me make a mustache on him under his nose. <laughs> that sounds like fun. Uh, folks, let's just, in case people are joining and confused what's, what exactly is going on, that's the <laughs> Block family. And uh, they're on Long Island. And I'm in Manhattan. And you're watching my daily COVID-19 show. Just so delighted that you're all with us. We have comments coming in from around the world. And among the people who are our guests are is Elise, who is a young lady, and uh, she and her family put together this very cool book called kellystayshome.com. It's a free resource. They have two flavors, one for big kids and one for little kids. And we just heard her read from the little kids version, and she did a really good job. So you're welcome. Obviously, we'd love for you to stay, Elise. I know we have some questions coming your way, but if there's any sleepy time requirements, the parents will tell us, and one of you will disappear, I'm sure, uh, with her. But uh, let's let's read some of the comments. Is that okay, Elise? We're gonna see what's what's happening here. Uh, people are watching, as I said, from around the world. Uh, Pradnya is watching from Silver Spring, Maryland. That's near Washington, D.C. She says, Jersey rocks. Kashif <laughs> is watching from New Delhi, India. Ying Chan is watching from Hong Kong. We work together on multiple uh, projects around talking about what we can learn from Hong Kong and East Asia. We had several top experts, medical and health health science experts, join us from Hong Kong University. Uh, Rose Horowitz is with us. Rose and Vandana Menon are our producers, and they're live tweeting right now. And we know that Adam is on Twitter. Lauren doesn't have time for Twitter. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so he's going to retweet these at some point. The hashtag we're using is 3COVID19 call. Uh, and Vandana is, uh, talk, is posting both here and on the website. And Adam knows this. I keep saying Kelly stays at home, but it's Kelly stays home. Much better title. That's why I'm not naming title. And, <laughs> uh, and look who's here. Uh, judge Rosemary Aquilina. Some of you know that she is the amazing judge who put away Larry Nasser in that terrible scandal. Oh, wow. We had a uh, national, international scandal. Thank you, Judge, for being who you are and for joining us tonight. And uh, this young lady gets to see a wonderful role model in Judge Aquilina. So uh, I think that's a wonderful moment for all of us. I'm going to remove myself from the screen so you folks can say hello to the judge. Hi, hello, Judge. Judge Aquilina. Thanks so much. Thank for you for your work. That's, that is really cool. I, I'm very happy to see that. Uh, let's see who's who else is here. Uh, Courtney says, totally sending this to our school in, in Tucson, Arizona. Have you been to Arizona, Elise? No. Yeah. You're going to go. Your people have to take you. Uh, now, look, look at this. Uh, by the way, I'm not showing comments. Even in the middle of this, there are people here coming in criticizing WHO, 
criticizing one political party, et cetera. So let me ask Lauren, uh, how do you stay focused on your job when there's so much noise and uh, trolling and everything that's happening, even to great medical folks like yourself? Yeah, so I think, you know, I think one of the, I think there's a lot of hard things about working as a healthcare provider in this pandemic. I think one of the nice things is that everyone recognizes um, the role that healthcare workers and all the frontline um, workers are providing now. And so I find it really humbling that, um, you know, patients have been really grateful, calling to ask how all of us in the office are doing, asking how they can help. And I think it's brought me in a way closer to my patients because we're all sort of facing the same adversity at this point. Um, I think the other nice part of being a healthcare provider is getting to know people over time, forming relationships, and, you know, it's really about the patient and their health and what they're going through. And so, you know, I think it gives you a reason to kind of reframe any time that this, the conversation gets really politicized back to the patient's health or back to really what's bothering them that's getting them to, to make some of those comments. And so, you know, as opposed to the dinner table conversation with your family or, you know, um, with your with your loved ones now on Zoom where things can get a little bit politically charged, I think within the exam room or now within sort of the telehealth realm, it's kind of a little bit easier to refocus it on people's health care. Um, such that you can cut past some of the anger that's out there and get to people's fears, people anxieties, um, and hopefully help everyone um, to feel as confident as they can and that what they're all going through is normal and that there's a lot of resources that are out there in the healthcare world and in the broader community um, to help them through it and to help them stay connected like your show as well as, as so much else that's going on in the world these days. That's... Uh, very nice. Uh, thank you. Courtney says, what a great site sharing this widely. Steve Taylor's watching from Philadelphia. He's one of our awesome producers. Uh, Daryl's watching from Richmond Hill, Queens in New York City. Right and Paula Kiger, who's also another great producer, is in Tallahassee. Uh, now, Elise, have you learned any of the state capitals of U.S. states? Have you had a chance to learn that yet? Um, Not yet. No, we do have them. a special connection to Florida. Have you ever been to Florida, Elise? Yeah, many times. What's the connection? Um, well, my grandma lives there, so we go there a few times every year. Not in Tallahassee, I bet. <laughs> <laughs> Tallahassee is the capital of Florida. So there you go. You learned something. Now you can tell your parents you're taking the day off. You've done your learning for today. <laughs> Right, uh, Paula is our fabulous producer who lives in Tallahassee. And uh, I'm just seeing a comment here. Let me ask Adam, who's the health economist. Someone just posted, uh, you know, a troll basically says, uh, Bill Gates can't keep viruses out of windows. How can you gonna trust his vaccine to help us? Uh, first of all, it's not his vaccine. Please take it away from there. Oh yeah, that's uh, pairing two things that are not naturally paired, right? Like a computer virus is fundamentally uh, completely different than a you know actual virus. Uh, it was just a play on words, essentially. Um, but uh, you know, I, I think everybody in the scientific community, or most people, do not believe that the actual coronavirus was man-made. Coronaviruses have been around for a long time, and this is only a slightly different version that has uh, come out. And there are pandemics like these that happen in the course of history. If you read your history books, there's like one essentially every century, and the last time it happened was, lo and behold, 102 years ago. So this is something that is terrible but it is something that absolutely has historical precedent all the way back to the plagues that happened in the 12th and 13th centuries. And therefore we should take this seriously and not put politics into it is certainly something I think. The website folks is called Kelly Stays Home and I'm gonna ask Elise to read us a little bit from the big boys and girls section. Uh, let's see, maybe a little harder, but I know she can do it. And this is gonna explain viruses and I'm hoping some uh, specific people I can think of would benefit from this information, even if they're big folks. Uh, we are on page 13 of 36. What is a virus, asked Kelly, as Joey climbs on, on his mom, mother's lap. A virus is a tiny germ 
It's so small that if you piled the virus on top of each other, it would take about a thousand to be the same thickness as a piece of paper or hair. It has little spikes on the outside that work like glue and sticks to everything, like Velcro. Where did coronavirus come from, asked Kelly. That's a great question, says Mommy. Nobody knows for sure at this point. This is a new kind of coronavirus. Other types of coronavirus have been around for years and most cause people to get a cold. Scientists think that this new strain may have come from a bat or an animal that looks like an ant eater called a pangolin. Since it is brand new and right now there is no cure, the best thing is to stop the virus from spreading. Awesome. That is that was so cool. Oh, Thank you, Elise. Uh, there are adults, Elise, that don't understand this, and you've now helped them with that. Uh, <laughs> our audience, of course, understands this, but uh, there are people you'll be surprised, including some of those uh, trolls that sometimes show up mm -hmm. elsewhere. Let's go like, and look at some of these other comments that are uh, coming in from all over. Uh, uh, Jennifer says, uh, what a great resource. I, I need this for my nine-year-old son. And Amy is watching from Bellevue, Washington. Washington State, as most people know, is where the focus was, the epicenter in the United States before, very sadly, New York took over. And uh, uh, Amy says, which version of this book will be available on Amazon, the one for younger ones or older ones? So we're in the process of getting them both up on Amazon. I literally was in the process of doing it when we started this call. Um, okay. We're going to have available a ebook for uh, big kids and an ebook for little kids, as well as soft cover books for big kids and little little kids. And we so just want to make it clear: it's available. We will, yeah, in a week or two, you said that's exciting. Yeah, yeah, uh, but it is available right now at KellyStaysHome.com. It's a PDF. They want this to go around the world. They want it to be free, uh, but people do want book versions also, and you're going to get that very soon. And look at Daryl, he has tagged Joey and Asha Martin. Check this out for your kids. We love that. Folks, you can start a wash party right now. And I do want to check with the Block family. Do all the other Blocks in the world know about this, that you're on live right now on Facebook? Have you shared and tagged yet? Have you gotten, oh, yeah. if you want to do that, you can. <laughs> Very quick on the draw with that, yeah. For yes, sure. we're getting better okay, at good. Good. social media as a result. We were uh, somewhat Luddites before this. Uh, but uh, we are we are getting better. Although uh, I'm not on Instagram, Lauren is on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. She's not on Twitter. But so we uh, divide and conquer when yes. it comes to social media. Yeah, that's learn great. And we want to make sure your family gets to see this video as well of you folks talking and sharing. It's a lovely moment. And Amy's four year old is watching. What is your uh, message, Elise? If I can ask you, a four year old is watching and worried about everything that's going on. What is your message for him? Just the way you talk to your brothers, what would your message be for a four-year-old who is worried about coronavirus? Um, I would say that it's not um, that bad. I mean, usually kids don't get it. It's more um, older people, but we should still stay out of everybody's space and not see all our friends all the time. That's great advice. Thank you. What about washing hands? It's really good. Yeah, very good. What about washing hands? Um, washing hands is really good because if you, but you also have to know that you have to use soap because if you just wash them, that won't get away all the very cool. germs on your hands. Look at this. Shiva, who's watching from Cupertino, California, says nicely read. And uh, sending you greetings, Elise. So now somebody's admiring your reading all the way from California. And Cupertino, you will learn when you're older, is the home of Apple computers. So if you have an iPhone or a MacBook, that's all made over there. I don't know, maybe she has an iPad. And that's made in, well, not made in Cupertino, it's designed. <laughs> Not yet. Okay. So we, we should have checked all of this before we we, we started. Uh, by the way, uh, Elise, my mom is watching from Kerala in India, and I want to say hello to her. I miss her. You're so lucky, Elise. Mommy and Daddy are right with you. My mommy and Daddy are very far away. 
They're a 20 hour plane ride away. So I, I miss them there terribly. Hi, Mama, I miss you. And uh, sorry, you're, um, we're, we're not together right now. And here's our friend from Hong Kong saying, fascinating project. Can I license it to adapt for a Chinese version for Chinese kids? Oh, what a great question. That's a, that's a great question. So I'd say that anyone can email us and we are more than happy to work to get this out um, to other languages. And we're already looking to translate into Spanish because of you know the big um, Spanish speaking population and the fact that um, we speak Spanish um, and we would love to get it to other languages as well. So I'd say that anyone can email us um, at um, coronaviruschildrensbook at gmail.com. Um, and we would be happy to work together. So thank you, Ying Shane, for your, for your um, note. And the email address is on the, uh, is on the uh, third page of the book. Copyright. Page. Okay, thank you. But it's good. just let's hear it one more time. Coronaviruschildrensbook at gmail.com. Perfect. But uh, definitely kellystayshome.com. It's on page three of the book, so they can see it. Ying, thank you very much. Uh, let's see, there are people all over. My father is watching as well. Hi, Dad. See, at least you got your mom and dad there. I have to say hello through this. This is the way we're keeping in touch. And here is uh, somebody's asking from India, can this be translated into an Indian language? And same way, same answer. Please go to kellystayshome.com and find the email address. It's on page three of the book, which is on that website. And uh, Amy says, thank you. That's fantastic. And Mark Lee is watching from Durham, North Carolina. And he says, uh, hello. And Roberta Oster is watching from Richmond, Virginia. And she has a terrific show. She's using the same technology to communicate. She's with the Virginia Interfaith Policy Center. And they're doing really great work. Uh, Anu says, uh, DOE is using Epic for reading for school and school assignments. This book should be on Epic. I'm so out of it, I don't know what Epic is. Oh, Epic is amazing. <laughs> Epic is amazing. Yeah, I read on it like every every day. So Epic has about 30,000 kids books. Um, it can be organized by reading level, by age, by interest. Um, and you can search for any title. There's a bunch where the book will read to you. So Elise's younger brother, who doesn't read yet, the book actually reads to him. There are audio books. Um, we use it through a free license through our school district. And Elise has read almost every book in there on dogs. <laughs> yes. And her twin <laughs> brother has read almost every book about every disgusting animal from head lice um, to bed bugs. So he is now the expert in all kinds of gross animals. Um, so yes, we would agree that we would love to have this on Epic. So um, if you or anyone else has any connection to, uh, to help us get it on there, we yeah. would greatly appreciate the connection. That's that's great. So thank you for, and look, uh, at least you taught me something, double checking the spelling, is that correct? Of the, uh, is that the correct spelling of the book? Yeah. I mean, the Gmail yeah. address? This is all, yes, the website is right and the email totally address right. is right. Thank you, Shane. Thanks. Okay. And uh, so thank you, Anu, for that idea. And she says, New York Public Library can do a book reading and post on their website, social media. Look at this, people helping you with ideas. So yeah. I hope you will follow up with the Public Library. Anybody who wants to collaborate, here is the contact information for this awesome family, uh, coronaviruschildrensbook at gmail.com. Just rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? There you go. <laughs> and Roberta says, I'm admiring her reading from Richmond, Virginia. Great job. So Richmond is, uh, and Virginia is in the South, as you know, uh, Elise, on your way to Florida one year, oh, you could drive through Virginia oh. to get to Florida, but well, it's a long, I've long drive. Virginia before. I'm not sure who I saw there. Who we saw? were driving through, where are we going? Um, and when we stopped, we had our all night drive. Oh, I think we were going to North Carolina. Cause like um, usually every year we go to North Carolina um, and see all of our friends there. That's that's awesome. Amy says my son Sanjay really appreciates Elisa's comments. We also love the way you read both versions. Look at that! You read the big kids version and the small kids version. So congratulations. That's we we really appreciate that. And uh, Mark says, what is the young girl's favorite book as a kid? I was a fan of Curious George growing up. What do you like? What's your favorite book to read? Um, what? I mean, we're reading Ramona books right now. Yeah, but my favorite type of books now is dog books because I have a dog at home and I love dogs. 
They're What's really your dog's cute. name? Zoe. Zoe, what kind of dog? Um, I think she's a mix of a pit bull and a chocolate lab. She's a rescue. Ooh, okay. Uh, is, is, does she read yet? <laughs> Not yet. You got to work on her. Exactly. Uh, Terry, Terry's watching from Las Vegas. Have you been to Las Vegas? Um, no, no, not yet. Okay. Uh, and Terry, she is tagging some a friend and saying, check this out, Dean Rothbard. Folks, all of you do this. You all have friends and family around the world who have children or they know kids. Somebody would benefit from this great conversation. And we're going to put both doctors to work and answer some big people <laughs> questions as well about the, about the virus and what we need to yeah. know. Uh, and uh, Roberta says, we would welcome her in Richmond. Look at that. You're getting an invitation, Elise, Ooh. to go to Richmond. Uh, Jennifer says, Elise is awesome. That is so cool. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> and Mark says, where in North Carolina does your family go? Which, which city? So we go to Chapel Hill, North Carolina to meet with a whole bunch of our friends from residency. We have about 10 families with, uh, last year we had 20 adults and 25 kids. And this year we decided that maybe we'll meet virtually because 10 families in healthcare with 25 kids probably would amount to a new outbreak of the of the pandemic. So, so we'll hold off on the all night drive to North Carolina this year, but um, we'll be waving high virtually to Richmond and everywhere else on the way. Great. And Mark Lee says, you're welcome in Durham, North Carolina. And Daryl says, you may also contact my friend Narisha Muhammad, and she give, he gives her email address. She can connect you with the right person at the Queens Public Library. So uh, Adam, you can find this later on, on the Facebook uh, yes, comments. Yes, There's a Facebook comment, so you can, you can find perfect. it. But how nice, Daryl. Thank you very Thank much you. Uh, for doing that. And folks, you've seen the contact information here. Let's once again take a look at the book so that people can understand what exactly we're talking about. It's called Kelly Stays Home, Signs of Coronavirus by Dr. Lauren Block, PhD and M uh, MD and MPH, Master of Public Health and Adam Block, PhD. And tell us about these illustrations, which I love. Yeah, so um, as soon as our text was completed, we set about finding an illustrator, um, which thanks to you know um, Facebook groups and Fiverr was actually a lot easier than we thought it was gonna be. So we connected with a wonderful illustrator um, who had done a bunch of work before illustrating scientific concepts and nutrition um, concepts. And so we knew she would do a great job bringing some of these tricky um, scientific concepts like you're highlighting here we're you know we're kind of equating um, just how small this microscopic organism is that about a thousand viruses piled on top of each other as Elise just read to us is about the thickness of one strand of human hair right so we wanted to bring that to life we want to bring to life exactly how soap works as Elise also read to us in sort of removing some of the virus from your hands and we wanted to kind of show that to, to the kids and families reading this. Um, and then we talked a little bit about how vaccines work um, and helping the body create sort of an army of antibodies such that if you ever encounter the virus, again, the antibodies are sort of waiting and ready as is your immune system to fight the illness before it actually causes a major infection. And so um, we knew that our illustrator, Alex Brissenden, who's in the UK, um, would do a great job illustrating some of these sort of difficult scientific concepts and making them come alive for the readers. And she did just that. And not only did she do that, she did really quick work and was really easy to work with and just a pleasure to get to know. Um, and so please um, support her. Alex Brissenden is our is our fabulous illustrator. Um, and we'll show them her the spelling of her name. There it is. And this is the cover, soft cover and Kindle book available soon from Amazon. Free big kid PDF here, free little kid PDF here. Folks, please go to kellystayshome.com so that you can get it. And you were saying about Alex? Yeah, sure. And, you know, I know she is one of thousands of talented illustrators out there who, you know, are looking for projects. Um, and I think all of us have a little more time to kind of pursue our passion projects now that we are all at home. And um, so I know all of these wonderful illustrators are ready to illustrate and bring anyone's sort of vision to life as she has done with us. And, you know, I think I think our hope is that um, 
Um, people can take any sort of concept in medicine and science and make it kind of accessible for kids because I think that helps all of us um, who are parents and teachers and um, have kids in our family to bring some of the some of the science and make it real and make it come to life for our kids so that we're all sort of constantly learning and I think that's you know some of our best resources all of us are looking for educational resources for our kids and our goal through this book Kelly Stays Home was to was to provide just that. Um, but I think there's room out there for a lot um, more learning and science. Um, and I think these illustrators do a fantastic job in, in bringing some of these concepts to life. They absolutely do. And by the way, I love the illustration of the coronavirus, right? We know, as Elise does, that it comes from the term crown, right? That's what corona means. And that's what because it looks like the virus has a crown. And you can see that there. Folks, I, you are wa you're watching about another 15 minutes or so, depending on what is Elise's bedtime. We're going to uh, get Elise and her, her parents are talking about this very special book that they have put together, free resource. People around the world can download it right now, kellystayshome.com, kellystayshome.com. Everybody, please take a look. And I wanna tell folks that we've, this is not the first thing we've done around children's books. We uh, did a very special, uh, uh, reading uh, with four big-time children's book authors that you can find on my archive. My entire 62 weeks of shows, 62 days of shows, you can see on my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Srenet, S-R-E-E-N-E-T, S-R-E-E-N-E-T. Please go there and take a look. We also have the author Nikki Grimes, who has won multiple awards for her children's books. And uh, so if you search Alan Katz, who help put together the first children's book series, uh, Conversation, and then you can see the one with Nikki Grimes. We're just so grateful that this entire community has come out from around the world to help us and support us in what we're doing, but also look at the support that's coming here. Mark says to Elise that they have a uh, Durham Library has a reader's party. I'll put you in touch with the leaders of that, which is cool. Right. Leaders and readers. It sounds very similar, but they're different. <laughs> and Daryl says, you may also reach out to Dr. Kumar Mahabir, who is very well connected in his home country of Trinidad and Tobago, and will help connect you with the Ministry of Education there. Is that wow. awesome? That's amazing. Yeah. Trinidad is a, uh, you know, it's, these, are, uh, these are islands uh, in the Caribbean, and uh, there's a big Indo-Caribbean community, and Daryl is one of the leaders here in New York, but Dr. Mahabir is a leader in the home island uh, of Trinidad and Tobago. So thank you so much. Stefan says, how do you think we can explain to kids, a seventh grader only child in particular, to stay positive about all of this when there's no end in sight for this lockdown? So hard on them with no social interaction. Digital just can't replace the physical for them. And it worries me. And you can feel the love of a father in that question, can't you? Uh, what are you, each of you, I'd like your answers on the parents. And if Elise has a thought, she can also add to that. So go ahead, please. Absolutely. So I think one of the things that we try to do in our book is start to illustrate some of the ways that kids can stay active in the community um, and can help others. So, you know, a couple of things that we're doing in our family um, is bringing food to our grandparents so they don't have to go to the store, bringing food to the food pantry in town, um, and, you know, organizing with local parents um, to try to improve education for our kids um, and work with the teachers to try to optimize some of the education that our kids are receiving. Um, and I think this is one reason resource that's out there and you know there are thousands of others and our goal is really to get outstanding resources for our kids but also um, to get our kids to see that you know there is still a broader world beyond the the walls of our house and that you know if we think creatively we can think about how to help the less fortunate in all of this um, in addition to the daily work that we do teaching or taking care of patients or um, or keeping people connected like you do Shri. Yeah, I, I think we also have to accept that this is hard. Um, and uh, for a child, I think it's I think it's incredibly hard. Um, what I try to do with our kids is try to make them productive. Um, things that, right, because lots of activities that we want to get good at, um, they take a lot of intensive time. And now is a unique opportunity where we have that intensive time. So Elise, how many words a minute do you type? Um, just give a number. 18. 18. So she types 18 words a minute. Now, before 
you know, 62 days ago, she typed zero words per minute <laughs> and she wouldn't even use two fingers. She'd only use one finger. So she's learning to type. So trying to come up with skills that you're going to have to learn, um, you know, I think is a is an incredibly good way. Now, me, I have made my own bread, my own yogurt and my own <laughs> ice cream. I can't tell you that my family likes it, but, you know, trying to be productive in the ways that we can is uh, something to that that we our family uses to stay positive. I, I love that. And I just want to say that as, as good as it is, all, all the things that you're doing, it's also okay if you can't do it also, right? Just relax. If you, if you, you don't have to be a master chef at the end of this. Your family may not like everything you do, but at least you're trying and you're doing something. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. They will not eat my yogurt. <laughs> no way. I, I, will, I will tell you that one of the things that uh, we have talked about, you may have heard that Shakespeare wrote King Lear in, in, during the plague. So while well, we decided to talk about that with two of the world's great experts on Shakespeare, and we had a, a global conversation with Emma Smith, uh, who's uh, head of Shakespeare studies at Oxford, and Cal Rudder, who is the sh head of Shakespeare studies at the University of Warwick with my colleague and dear friend, uh, Linda Bernstein. And the question was, did he write it? And do I have to write King Lear to be worthy in this time? And the good news is, that not only may he, there's a good chance he didn't write King Lear during the play, that you don't have to write King Lear during mm -hmm. the play to feel like you've uh, not wasted this plague or wasted this opportunity. I think I tell everyone work on something, but it doesn't have to be big. It could be some small skill that you want to learn. And I love the idea that she's now typing 18 words per minute. That's awesome. When I was applying to Columbia Journalism School a thousand years ago, it's more like 1991, we were told you have to be able to type type at nine, at 35 words per minute in order to get into grad school. So you're more than halfway there already, which is really exciting, uh, at least at such a young age. So I love that you're doing that. Folks, we have just a few more minutes. Please ask your questions right now of this family. We'll show you a little more about the book right here so you can see it. Uh, and the book is called Kelly Stays Home. And here's a little bit more about our authors. Lauren is an MD, MPH and, and a primary care physician, an associate professor at Zucker School of Medicine, mom of three. She graduated from Yale, Harvard, and Johns Hopkins. No pressure there for anybody. Uh, Adam <laughs> is a health economist and assistant professor of public health at New York Medical College and the father of the same three. He received his PhD from Harvard and worked in Washington, DC, helping to draft and implement the Affordable Care Act, which is also known as Obamacare. And Lauren and Adam live in Long Island with their seven-year-old twins, Brandon and Elise, four-year-old Jordan and Zoe, the most loved dog in the world, not seen here. Our uh, family loves eating dinner outside, going to the beach and 80s music. Oh my God, I forced my kids to listen to 80s music, a lot of 80s music. So uh, what are some songs that you like? It doesn't have to be 80s. What are some songs that you're listening to these days? Elise, what do you like or not like that we listen to? Um, uh, well, um, we usually have to listen to sometimes what my brothers like, and what my brothers like is boring. It's like Star Wars, Star Wars, and more Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you like? What do you like? Um, yeah, I like songs by Katy Perry and Taylor <laughs> Swift. Nice. Very cool. Well, <laughs> <laughs> they have that in common. They yeah. really listen to a lot of kids bop and dancing. Yeah, that's great. And look at this. Rose has put in a link to the children's auth book authors edition that we did. And everybody should uh, look for that. There's a link right there on Facebook. Please find it. Please watch it. I laughed so hard when we did that. And I, I keep telling people we have to laugh. Otherwise, we will cry because <laughs> there's just so much sadness in the world. Uh, I, I do want to uh, tell everyone about a very exciting two shows coming up after this. So tonight is Tuesday. We just did, we're doing this uh, conversation. Uh, tomorrow, we have a conversation about the launch of a jazz coalition to help mm -hmm. jazz musicians, speaking of music, at least jazz mm -hmm. musicians who need to be supported at this time. We need to support our creative folks. So the jazz coalition just debuted yesterday and they're going to be on our show tomorrow at uh, 9 p.m. talking about uh, how you can help jazzcoalition.org. And then a very special show 
at, uh, on Thursday at 8.30, just a half an hour earlier than usual, and you're going to get a chance to meet Sapphire, who uh, many of you know is uh, the fantastic author who wrote the book called Push, which became the Oscar-winning movie Precious. And uh, that was about 10 years ago, and it changed the way people understood a lot of things going on in our communities. And she's also the author of The Kid and American Dream. So we're just honored and delighted that Sapphire will be with us. And that is on Thursday at 8.30 p.m. in New York City, 6 a.m. In, on Friday in India. So uh, 48 hours from now or less than that, please join us and please tell your friends about it. How can you keep track of all this? Please go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Srinet, and there you can uh, get an, uh, an alert. You can subscribe and you can get an alert whenever we have uh, uh, guests and uh, our show so you can see that. We have just a couple more uh, minutes left. We have uh, some questions and comments that are coming in. Daryl says, tremendous amount of free certificate courses online right now. Take advantage of that. Jonathan, when he was young, he had to type 60 words per minute. <laughs> So oh, that was, uh, got some work. And, uh, and Rose, uh, I worked at the temp, temp during the summers and it was 90 words per minute. Oh my God, that is really scary uh, because that's a lot. And uh, uh, here's the episode with poet Nikki Grimes. Uh, she's posted that in there. And Jennifer says, I forced my 13 year old daughter to watch 80s movies feeling accomplished. <laughs> Yay. Uh, Rose said, what my brothers like is Star Wars, Star Wars, says Elise. <laughs> and Rose Arowitz is excited about Sapphire. Rose is our producer who delivers one hit guest after another, and we're really pleased. Wow. And Courtney says, I've been inviting my people to my watch party, was making a lot of comments, but not sure they came over to this area. I'm sorry, Courtney, that is one of the problems with this technology, that we'd have to go into that watch party to see it. So I promise I'll go into the watch party later. But Courtney, if there's anything we should know or anything Elise should know, you can type that in there and that would be great. And Daryl says, we, I can do about 45 <laughs> words per minute. Uh, I can tell you folks that I've not thought about this topic, but by talking <laughs> about Elise, now we're all thinking about how many words per minute we can type. The good news is it doesn't matter as much, right? The, because of the delete key and word processing, it's very different from what it used to be. Uh, because the, any mistake you made was a problem and it's become certainly easier. And I want to thank my mom for a thousand things, but one of the things she did was she bought me a typewriter when I was 12 and taught me to touch type when I was 12. It was not easy, but uh, you know, you eat your vegetables, Elise, and then you can push down on those keys. Much easier for you to do now uh, than, than uh, what we had to do back in the day when we were really old. So Elise, before we go, we want you to read, if that's okay, one more little section of the book. Are you ready to do that? Um, which book? Well, yeah, you pick and I need to find it. So you have to give me a minute. So tell me which one you're going to read. Maybe something with a lot of illustrations okay. also. Sure. Um, so which, um, where am I going? So page 16, that's okay? Oh, yeah, which book? Of Kelly Stays Home. No, no, Big sorry. Kids which, Big Kids. Big Kids version. Okay, hold on one second. Uh, yeah, page 16. Here we are. Oh, very nice. Uh, with the, the cover one. illustration, three down. So is that the one? That's fine. We can do, we can do yeah. this one. That's perfect. Perfect. Okay. How can something so small hurt us? Asked Kelly. One, once the virus gets into your cells, the tiny pieces that make up your throat or your lungs, it can cause them to stop doing their normal job, bringing in oxygen and removing carbon dioxide from your body. Instead, all they do is produce more viruses. People can get sick with the disease called COVID-19, which means coronavirus disease, first discovered in 2019. The first typical, the first typical goes to the lungs, which can cause them to stop working normally. That is why many people get ba get a bad cough or have trouble breathing. Some people with the virus get a fever as their body tries to fight the infection. Many people get better at home, but some people need to stay at the hospital where they are given extra oxygen to help them breathe. Sometimes people even need a machine that brews for them called a ventilator to help their 
lungs recover. Great job. That wow, was cool. very, very cool. I, I like that very much. You've, you've done a great job. Uh, can Kelly, not Kelly's mom, can Elise's mom explain this for us? Sure. So um, that's our attempt to sort of illustrate herd immunity, right? So, um, you know, one of the studies that came out in New York um, a couple of weeks ago from the Department of Health um, was they started testing um, healthy people. People were feeling well at the supermarket and they found that to our surprise, um, about 15 percent of people in New York um, tested positive, had positive antibodies. Um, to COVID-19. So they were already immune to COVID-19. And the benefit is that as more people hopefully are asymptomatic, or hopefully one day when the vaccine comes out, hopefully in the not too distant future, more and more people will have antibodies or be immune to the virus. And when that happens, sort of as shown here um, in the bottom image, fewer people are then susceptible to the virus. And if somebody is contagious, there's many fewer people who can then um, transmit the virus, get the virus and transmit it to others. So the chance that it will travel within the population is a lot lower. And I think the estimates now for this virus are that we'll need about 70% immunity till this virus will stop spreading, you know, as quickly as it is right now. So we're at 15% once we can get to um, about 70%. Um, through hopefully um, a vaccine in the near future that will really help keep us safe and can actually help keep people who can't get a vaccine for whatever reason um, safe as well. So that's kind of where we're heading through herd immunity and that's how we can all kind of stay safe together. And until then, you know, I, I just want to kind of highlight what a great job I think everyone is doing, staying home, you know, listening to everything that the government is telling us here in New York and sort of around the country and across the world, realizing that none of this is easy and that for none of us is this life is normal. Um, but I think, you know, as we've seen, we've been able to flatten the curve here in New York um, and hopefully we'll continue to around the country so that we don't overwhelm our hospitals and so that we minimize the percent of people who get infected, particularly um, the elderly, as well as those with comorbidities. So obviously there's a lot more work to be done here, um, but this is a you know a huge first step that I think everyone has taken together. I focused on this page again, just to tell uh, Elise that for the first time, I've been hosting a show called something to do with COVID-19 for 62 days. I never thought, what does COVID stand for? I never thought of it till mm -hmm. just now. And the way she, I, I you know, skipped through the book, but I had not focused on this. So the way she read it, Corona virus D for disease 19. I knew about the 19, but I had no idea where COVID came from. Elise, look at this. You helped an old man understand this. So thank you. <laughs> That's what COVID stands for. Yay. Thank you for teaching me. I'm so happy. But it just shows you that even somebody who thinks he's been on top of this never actually wondered, does COVID actually stand for anything? And this is the way we're uh, we're doing this right now. So I really, really appreciate it. Before you go, a couple of quick things. Number one, I'm going to ask the health economist to look at a chart that he has seen many <laughs> times before and get his take on this chart. Uh, this is uh, the latest chart from the FT. We know um, that uh, these numbers move up and down. But as we're looking at this, uh, um, the U.S. is still up there, folks. The blue, light blue line is Korea, South Korea, as you know. South Korea and the United States got their first confirmed virus the same day, the first case the same day. Look where we've ended up. Look at the United States. And now look at the green. That's Russia, Brazil, India, all coming up here in ways that we had not thought they would be. So let me ask uh, both doctors to reflect. But first, Dr. Block, the health economist, looking at this. Sure. I mean, when we were talking about this stuff a month ago, everybody was like, the peak, the peak, the peak, the peak. And all I could think was like, the peak is the peak, but that doesn't mean it goes away the next day. It just means it's the highest point. But if the peak is super high and the next day is only a little bit less, the next day is still pretty bad. So things are not getting better as fast as many of us hoped they would. Uh, and so that's my that's been my overall concern. And I see that there are lots of places with, uh, you know, that that are peaking later. 
Um, but things are not getting better as quickly as we hoped they would, which is why the lockdowns keep on extending. But also, I think America is the only country where people are going into state capitals demanding that they be open so they can go to tattoo parlors and things like that. God knows I need a hair cut more than anybody else, but I know the value of staying home. What do you say to them, both doctors, first Adam and then Lauren? Uh, I, I, I broke down and my wife gave me a haircut. Uh, <laughs> she did a good. very good job, but it was one of the scarier points in my life. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it wasn't scary. She cuts your hair too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, so yeah, it, it doesn't seem like a good idea. It, it seems like it's low cost to wait a little bit longer to open up because if you don't wait a little bit longer and you're wrong and the virus starts to spread again, the it'll get much worse. So the Spanish flu came in three waves. The first wave was in spring, sort of like this wave. The second wave, which was more virulent than the first wave, was in late summer, early fall. And so people saw the good weather and they went outside to enjoy it. And it was worse than the first time. And then there was a third wave again in the winter. And only after then did it did it really start to pass. So that is my concern with all of this. Uh, so we all, we need to be very careful. The good weather is going to be very tempting to try to enjoy some of it and socialize with our friends and have barbecues. But we have to be really, really careful. And the data isn't showing, to me at least, that it's safe to go out. How about you, Doc? I think working here in New York, I think so many of us have been affected, right, by our coworkers, our family members, our friends, our neighbors getting sick, that in a way, it's it's a lot easier to see the threat and to see, you know, the need to stay home, right? And I think we're still, you know, quickly um, um, coming off of this peak and willing to do whatever it takes. I think it's got to be a lot harder in a place that has not been as severely impacted to to continue this lockdown when it's so hard on everybody and hard on us financially without sort of seeing that imminent threat. But, you know, I think, um, you know, thinking about our, our, our kids and everyone's kids with the new rise in cases of PIMS, of the Kawasaki-like disease that's, that's kind of growing in incidents here in New York and in other places as well shows that, you know, there are multiple threats that this virus is causing, right, to those with multiple chronic conditions, to the elderly, um, but also even to kids. So um, I think the threat is still very real. I'm glad that the peak is now behind us and, you know, that things are a little bit better now in the hospitals and for many of my colleagues, but I think we are far from beyond the most dangerous point and my hope is that we will continue this for the long haul as long as you know the government tells us to and as long as we need to um, so that we can avoid another peak later um, and certainly I know this is not just happening here but around the world and um, you know I really think we're all in this together trying to figure out how we do this um, until the, that vaccine comes about and until some of this herd immunity is gathered. I, I couldn't agree more. And uh, we also want to do a shout out to Dr. Sandeep Kapoor, your colleague who uh, championed your book. Yeah, Sandeep. Hey, Sandeep. <laughs> Sandeep is uh, an amazing addiction medicine doctor. And we were at South by Southwest talking about, you know, good old times. We were at South by Southwest together on a panel that I got to moderate it was was so, so, so much fun. But it shows you also that we have to be super careful at this time for all of us. Uh, 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 Dr. Uh, Block, Adam uh, Block, worked on the Affordable Care Act. Uh, how worried are you that uh, if more more of it is derailed and removed by the by the states, by the uh, by the federal government, by through the uh, by the Supreme Court action, that we'll be in much worse condition than where we already are as a developed country, allegedly developed country? Yeah. So I. Uh, I I don't worry about too much. The the piece that I worry the most about, because it's, you know, it's been 10 years. We just had the 10th anniversary. Uh, I was actually supposed to go down to Washington, D.C. for a 10th anniversary party of the ACA, uh, you know, just a couple wait, weeks sorry, ago. I didn't, I didn't wait. I, one second. It did, 10 years? It doesn't seem like it's been 10 years. 10th the anniversary of the started. ACA was, uh, you know, March, March 23rd. That's when it was signed, March 23rd, 2010. Now it's uh, May 2020. So yeah, Amazing. so it's Amazing. stuck it out for, for um, 10 years. 
throughout lots of different things, multiple Supreme Court cases. Uh, the only thing that keeps me up at night, and it doesn't really keep me up at night, is the Supreme Court. Because at the end of the day, it's the opinion of nine people. And in reality, it's only like one or two deciding, you know, human beings deciding factor that could go in any direction on this. Because there is a new Supreme Court case that is coming out, although it, we don't expect it to be decided until next session, like a, a, a year from now. And then what about, uh, do you think this current crisis highlighting the value of good health care will sway anybody on this or withdraw the case or anything like that? Could that happen? Yeah. So I think what will happen, I think it'll gain some political popularity. And the reason for it is that there are going to be, and there already have been a lot of people that have lost their jobs. And one of the scariest part of losing your job is losing access to your health insurance. And so what the Affordable Care Act does is it provides you the opportunity to buy uh, health insurance for uh, a somewhat reasonable price on the exchanges. You always have that safety net of being able to do that. You don't have to qualify for Medicaid. You don't have to, if your COBRA runs out, you're fine. It doesn't matter if you have a pre-existing condition, you can go to the exchanges and buy health insurance if you've lost your job. So I think people, when they lose their job, are going to start to feel that comfort of being able to do that and almost forget the fact that we used to live in a world, I very much remember that world, that you couldn't do that. And it was really scary. So I think it'll provide people a measure of uh, safety. Well, uh, we're very proud of you for the work you've done, as I'm sure you are Thank as you. well. And I hope in a later show, we can actually uh, bring on some more experts and talk about this because... Uh, I think the American medical system is broken, despite heroic uh, doctors like uh, like Lauren on the front lines uh, doing such great work, our nurses, our orderlies, all of those folks. Uh, we still have a broken uh, payment and uh, infrastructure for payment and, and supporting people. There is no reason, and it doesn't happen in any other country in the world, that you get cancer and you go bankrupt. You have a heart attack and you can go bankrupt. Why that is acceptable it's one of the ways that makes America unique, and it's a shame in so many ways. But let's leave the politics out of it for, or any more politics out of it for tonight. I just want to thank our uh, our doctors and our young reader who has already gotten so much praise, including Mark says, amazing job as a reader. I think she's trying to take my job as a radio <laughs> announcer. Uh, so watch out elise you're 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 getting attention on this work that's great carla was working late but she's catching it now and she's going to watch it again afterwards all of you can do that uh, people on twitter are saying hello and carla says that she has this 11 year old boy over here and rose is tweeting everybody check out their tweets look at jude checking in from the philippines uh do you know about the philippines elise it's a country in asia and uh it's just so great we've gone around the world uh, uh, with with you, Elise, and Reynu is watching, and she says, so right, Sri, the system is broken. So we've got to let all three of them get to bed, and I think uh, other half of the family is already in bed, and uh, I also have twins. My, uh, nice. my words of uh, unsolicited advice to uh, these doctors is that uh, I, I quote someone named Gretchen Rubin, who's an amazing writer who coined the term, who, who said, the days are long, but the years are, uh, years are short. My twins were that age just yesterday, and now they're 17 and um, had their SATs canceled. So wow. uh, very different uh, and how fast it goes. Just as you said, 10 years since AC, I cannot believe it. Uh, I'm so grateful to you, Adam, for your work, and thank you for being here with us. I also want to thank Lauren, Lauren Block, both of you, uh, for being here with kellystayshome.com. Uh, very important uh, new uh, item in the toolkit that we have to teach our children about everything that's going on. And to young Elise, uh, you got to stay up late and uh, <laughs> later than your brothers even. And uh, you did a great job tonight. We're very grateful. Thank you for letting us have mommy and daddy's time and attention so they could write this book. I'm sure you inspired them so much. And a big shout out to both blocks also for joining my spin-off radio show, WBAI 99.5 FM every Saturday. 12 to noon. They were only supposed to be there for an hour. One of our <laughs> guests uh, had to cancel, had an emergency, and then I had to call Lauren while I was on the air and say, can you come on the air? And she did, <laughs> and she stayed an hour on a Saturday. I am so grateful to you, Lauren, for doing that. 
and for uh, Adam, I presume, wrangling the kids by himself when that was going on. <laughs> mac and cheese. Uh, so, <laughs> mac and cheese. Uh, Lisa is, is waving. Uh, uh, Rose says, impressive explanations in this book. Linda says, believe Sri, the years are short. She's already a grandma, so she knows from multiple generations. Jennifer says, phenomenal so three, phenomenal show, three, so much good information because of these folks, not because of me. Mark says, seems like we're just 20 minutes ago, but this July I turned 58, have no idea where the years went. And Rose says, her twins turned 50, turns 20, sorry, 20 wow. years old today, it may seem, it may feel like 50. And uh, uh, that's just uh, great. Uh, does the young girl or other kids in your family know what they want to do for a living? Have you thought about that at all, Elise? Elise? What do you want to do? I want, I want to be a veterinarian. I was about to say veterinarian. That sounds great. We need people to take care of our lovely animals. We have a dog called Tara. She's on Instagram, duh.tara, T-H-E dot T-A-R-A. She's going to turn five this year. So she's now older than my twins because, as you know, seven years, you know, we multiply. Yeah. And so she, she's turning 35. And thank you to the Block family. Excellent. So one thing I want to do is I want to take a selfie with the Block family. So how do I do that? I'm going to put them on a solo shot, and then I'm going to turn around and take a selfie with them. Is that OK, Elise? Can I take a selfie with you? All right. So we're going to do that. We're going to put you there like this, and you're going to turn around. I mean, I'm going to turn around, and I'm taking the picture. One, two, three. All right, selfie taken. Others could take one too. You guys are awesome. Please get some sleep. Thank you for what you're doing. Good luck with the book. Good luck with everything you're doing. And coronavirus children's book at Gmail. Everybody, if you can help them, please hook them up. Uh, they want to give away the online version free, but of course they're going to uh, be able to sell the other book on Amazon and everywhere else. So thank you very much. We've got some uh, uh, some. Uh, uh, Wrap up stuff we're going to do, but we're going to let you go. Thanks very much. Bye, Thank Elise. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Shree. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Wow, I'm so grateful to them and to all of you for watching. I want to remind you, tomorrow we're going to meet the jazzcoalition.org, folks. There's a new venture that's helping people understand the value of jazz music and supporting our jazz musicians. 9 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. Please don't miss that. And then on Thursday, an epic event for all of us. Uh, we're going to get to meet Sapphire, the author and poet whose big book, Push, became the Oscar-winning Precious, also the author of The Kid, An American Dream, and a very important book and movie, and she's going to talk. It's uh, going to be an extremely moving, emotional evening, I'm sure, for all of us. Uh, episode number, number 64 is coming up. We also want to thank our sponsors, and a reminder to everybody that you can sponsor us like Nidhi has by donating, I mean, by sponsoring something in your life that you want to support. Maybe there is a birthday invitation uh, announcement, maybe a graduation, uh, maybe a wedding invitation, any, 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 anything you want to do, you can use our space. Congrats to ProPublica on its latest Pulitzer Prize that makes six in 12 years journalism that holds the powerful accountable. Donate today at ProPublica.org. And this ad was brought to you by Nidhi Sinha. And please don't forget that you can support us and make use of the work that we're doing as well. We meaning me and my Digi Mentors team. And I'm just going to show you here. These are the services we offer at Digi Mentors: converting your in-person conference into a virtual event, making your own live web show, uh, or streaming into multiple platforms, consulting, training. Just ask us. We can be 10% of your event or 110% of your event. A really good opportunity for you to uh, work with us. Please email me. Sri at Sri.net is my email address. Uh, what, what's there to say? We had an amazing evening. We traveled around the world with uh, uh, the wonderful Block family. We want to thank two doctors, Block, Dr. Adam Block, uh, who is a, a PhD, and Dr. Lauren Block, who's an MD, MPH. And we are so grateful to them and to their little girl, Elise, nine years old, who, uh, seven years old? I've forgotten now <laughs> already. Uh, but she was amazing. I think she's seven. And she did a great job. Jude from uh, the Philippines uh, it, uh, says, stay safe. And Steve Taylor says, that was wonderful. Great family, says uh, uh, Rose. 
And Joe is saying hello from outside of the town of Atlanta. He's in Cumming, Georgia. And Jonathan said, sounds like a book I should read. Great show. Thank you. And Brainu says, thank you. Looking forward to the book. Everybody, you can get it right now at kellystayshome.com. kellystayshome.com. Thank you very much, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow night where you'll meet the jazzcoalition.org folks. And you will also get a chance uh, to uh, get a chance to meet uh, on Thursday, Sapphire, the author whose book Push became the movie Precious and changed the conversation about family and uh, many other issues and poverty in America. So please join us for that amazing show that Rose Horowitz, our producer, is going to work on with me. And we always, always want to thank our other producer, Vandana Menon. And uh, thank you very much for watching. And we, we look forward to seeing you soon. Uh, thank you very much, everybody. Please email me, sree at sree.net, S-R-E-E -E at S-R-E-E.net. And please, please, please go to my uh, YouTube and please sign up uh, so that you can subscribe and know when our shows are. And if you have WhatsApp, here's another way you can do that. Uh, this is my WhatsApp. Uh, not This is not a WhatsApp uh, group. This is just a WhatsApp alert. So all you do is take your phone. If you have an iPhone, just point it at the camera. And you will I mean, point it at the screen right now. And you will get an alert when I have a show live. You can just tune in. But otherwise, uh, you just go to YouTube and sign in there. Thanks very much, everybody. Super grateful. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.